Hello, it's Mary Beth from Stencil Girl Products. I am going to accomplish several things this morning with you. I'm going to do my recap where I review stencils that we've introduced not only the past month, but the past before month. So we're gonna look at November and December stencils that were offered. And I'm also in the process of this gonna paint some papers because I'm leaving on vacation tomorrow and I love nothing more than having little snips of painted papers with me because it's so hard to carry all the paint on the plane and it just gets complicated. So I like to do it ahead of time. And then I just grab some little parts and I am ready to roll. So one of the, um, the stencils, one of the artists who introduced stencils in the past two months was Natalie Kalbach. And I love Natalie's designs. And this time was no disappointment. I mean, they're never disappointment, but these were especially amazing. She did these marks that I just don't even know where these came from out of that girl's head. I mean, I am telling you, I just love these. There's one, two, three, four, nine by 12 stencils with her marks. And if you search on Stencil Girl products under her name, these will all come right up for you. Well, before I started the video, I used black gesso and tissue paper. This is that tissue paper from the dollar store. And I want you to look at it close because it is oh so worthwhile. It is slightly beefier than normal tissue paper and it has a smooth side and then more of a porous side. When I stencil on it, I use the smooth, the glossier side because it seems to tolerate the paint better. And I just cut the tissue down into strips and made one strip with each of Nat's stencils. And I can already tell that I'm gonna adore these. You could just isolate one little section and make a border in your journal. You could just use a tiny snip and embellish. I mean, you could even echo these with your own marks and use like make mark making kind of simulations of these. This one, I mean, I hate to call out faves, but this might be one of my faves. I love this one. I like this one a lot. I'm so angular grid that this is, <laughs> it's got a little arc, you know, oh, for God's sakes, that I might use a little arc in something. Um, but I did like it. And I love this one. Look at these. To me, these kind of harken to some sort of a, a city look. I just love them. And then this one with these marks was really special too. I, I very much like them all and they're going to follow me to my trip. I can tell you that for sure. So I want to go on to um, the other stencils that Natalie introduced that are more in keeping with the patterns she has done for us in the past. And these are super, super cool. Look at them. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of the finger painting paper and I'm gonna get some colors and just start to um, layer up here. This is called a Milky White. You know, when these paints are on sale, um, I just grab them up. These are these Master Touch paints. And you just can't, simply can't beat the price. That's all there is to it. Let's, I'm going to just try to use, I'm going to try to use these in a really random way. I think those of you who follow me in Stencil Club have seen me stenciling with my color shaper like this. And I've never done this in the past, but I'm starting to enjoy, I'll hold this up. I enjoy the way it brings the paint across the paper in a thick and thin way, more painterly than you might tend to achieve if you were doing precise stenciling. For my purposes and what I use stencils for, I like that very much. I mean, I'm not saying I'm never gonna be precise again because of course I probably will, but for right now, I'm just kind of into this. And um, I thought even though these stencils are not 
theoretically meant to layer and attach. I thought it might be interesting to see how they looked if I did layer them up. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using a couple colors I like. That's this stencil, pretty sweet, eh? Yeah. And then we've got this one. I don't know, these, this one's really cool. All these you can use right side or every any which side is up. That's the thing about Nat, you know? She's very free flowing, much like me. I love that girl. She's a German girl, and you know I'm of German heritage as well. Not that that means anything, but I'm just saying. Okay, and blending up on the page. You know, these are nice, very sweet stencils. And then this last one. See, I like how this is getting a little wild and wooly, very much. Now here, this one's got another opening, just like that first one had. Let me drag that one back, because I want to look and compare. Oh, I see. Okay, so these two both have the openings, and then this has that one pattern, and this has the little, I'm calling this the eyelash pattern. Doesn't it look like a closed eye with eyelashes? So anyway, cool, well, we'll use this one last. And I'm thinking I'm gonna grab a gold metallic for this because I just think it might be kind of pretty over top some of these other colors we've got going on. And this is the time when you let loose and you just don't think too much about it, right? Because these are gonna be papers that might be in the background of your work. You might grab a little perfect element for the foreground, or who knows what, but I find nothing is more gratifying than playing with paper and painting paper. So here we are, super simple, not much going on here. It's not an important piece of art, but it's definitely something I will bring on my trip with me. In another one of our designers, we've got Valerie Sojin, and you know how much I love Valerie, right? Everybody knows this. I adore, adore, adore Valerie. Yes, so she has done some more kind of mid-century modern stuff that I like quite a bit, and Look at the, I love this. The simplicity of this is divine. So I'm, I'm gonna start with this and I'm gonna tell you what I'll do. I've got an idea here. Let me, I'm gonna grab a baby wipe and clean this off real quick. And I've got my black gesso over here at the side, my golden gesso. So I'm gonna just smooth this on the fingerprint. This is on the fingerprint paint paper, that finger painting paper that I get at the dollar store. Uh, somebody told me it's back in stock, and I think they might have just taken it off the shelves, you know, for the holiday. That's what we're thinking. But anyway, I just cut it down into very small pieces that I use for this sort of thing. I'm going to show you the paper now. I just got paw prints on it, but it's a slick paper. It's super slick, cheap, cheap, cheap finger painting paper. It has become one of my must haves for, um, you know, for painting papers that I use in things. Love it. Now I'm gonna wipe this off and set it aside because I don't think I'm gonna get messy on this one. I wanna be a little bit more precise and we'll just set that aside. So I'm going to a sponge now and I think I want copper on top of black. This one I haven't even opened yet. Okay, there's copper because I like the contrast to the black. And I wanna use this little star type. I'm pushing it because I should have let it dry totally, but I didn't. And I really adore the simplicity of this stencil. I mean, it's just one of those designs. It's like, oh my gosh, really? How could I have not thought of this through the years, you know? But look at how beautiful. Look at this. So simple, so divine. Now, I have an idea that I'm curious about. So that's what we're here for, people. I want to ink it up and see if I can slap it down and get use the stencil as more of a, a stamp 
So I'm gonna ink, get paint on my little brayer, ink this up, and then I'm gonna slap it down right here. And I'm gonna use, this is a clean brayer, it's stained, but it is clean. And I'm gonna do this. <gasps> oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. People, people, people. Yes, so that was a gorgeous, I bet we can do the same thing with this one and with this one. So we've got nice options here from Valerie. Since I have that one, I think that's probably all I'm gonna do in the mid-century. Um, way but I want to take a look at her 9 by 12 because it's gorgeous so here is the 9 by 12 and this has this is an ATC stencil so y'all know what that means right you cut it down and then um, cut it into nine I'm gonna grab my cutting board so I can show you exactly how this works all right I'm not sure if this is all going to show up on screen or not, but hopefully you'll get the idea. So this is 9 inches by 12 inches. So 9 divided by 3 is 3 inches. So we want to make our first cut at the 3 inch mark. So we're going to line it up there. And I'll press down and slice. Okay, so there's our first slice. And then 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we do our these cuts at the 4-inch mark. And my business partner, Frank, always does the math on this for me because I typically design mine in such a hodgepodge way that they're never, they're like hand-drawn and there's not the normal amount of space. But ha, he fixes it all up for me. So you get three six nine stencils for the price of one nine by twelve this our atc stencils absolutely rock and i'm gonna tell you i travel more frequently with atc stencils than anything else because they are for one exactly the size of a little library pocket card so you can put them in that probably put them in a ziploc bag or anything else the point is they are super easy to travel with because they're not very big and you get a lot of bang for your buck. And here they all are, yay! I'm thinking I shall take these with me, but um, I wanna try a few of them. I know I wanna use the trees a lot because, then then this, look at this, what a bonus. You get both the positive and the negative of the trees and they match up. Oh, Valerie. She's something, isn't she? You get some leaves, you get some foliage. This, these are little baby banners that Valerie designed, and I actually love these because you stencil this in a color. Let me show you what you do here because these are pretty sweet. And um, I'm going to use them in my journal. Let's get a sponge. Now, this is a time when I would probably use a sponge and keep it rather precise. So I'm gonna stencil across here. I think I'm gonna just stencil all these because I know I would use them for, you know, various different things during my journaling on vacation. All right, so when you pick up the stencil, you have these little banners. And so what you can do is you can write in each of these little areas and then you can cut them out and glue them down in your journal they are really nice to have on hand let's use some you know i never saw a neon i didn't like right you know how i am so let's put some of these other little mid-century modern designs over here now these that i'm stenciling right now are for the purpose of cutting out and using in my journal pages. Obviously, you can directly stencil in your journal too. I'm just trying to illustrate this for you, but look at how sweet these stencils are. I didn't even use the whole one. I'm gonna put the rest of it over here. I didn't have enough paper. <laughs> but um, here's what I like about these. 
I like the shapes for one. And then I like the fact that she's got these little angular parts in there. That gives you a lot of um, movement when you go down to use them. Here are more banners to use in your journal pages for um, you know headlines or titles or captions or anything. And here's little people. I mean, this stencil is the bomb. Honestly, I don't think I looked at it that closely before. I'm just realizing all the bang for the buck you get with this one. And then let's use this guy with, how about this? Look at this fluorescent. This is a happy, happy chap right here. Flying paint. Oh, wow, that's a nice color, right? Just a dab of this on a journal page, tiny bit. It's going to pop up anything you do and make it quite interesting. Solely from the color alone. Isn't that gorgeous? Nice, nice, nice. Very sweet. Well, I would say uh, this Valerie stencil is going to travel with me too, probably. Or maybe a few of them anyway. So nice job, Valerie. And then next we have some stencils from Daniela Wolf. Daniela has been one of my favorite people, generally, just a, one of my favorite human beings for a long time. She's so cool, and what she does is she travels quite a bit. She's either retired or semi-retired, and she travels a lot. And when she travels, she photographs amazing things. She has an eye like you cannot believe. And she photographs this cool stuff and turns it into stencils. And we are the lucky recipients of that because honestly, they're just designs that, I mean, who would think, right? So I'm gonna swipe this across a piece of the tissue and then we'll take a look at what we've got here. I forgot to look and see if I was on the glossy or the porous side of the tissue. So this will be interesting to see. The other reason I like doing these in advance is that I don't travel with acrylic paint. I only travel with watercolors. And as you know, I mean, I, I can paint with what I can stencil with watercolors, but it just takes a little bit more time and precision. So it's kind of nice to have these things stenciled in advance and then you can easily work them in to whatever you have to be doing. And I journal a lot when I'm on vacation. It's one of my great pleasures in life and I definitely take time to do it. Oh yes, very nice, huh? These are great stencils, super interesting. This one, uh, they're just fantastical. We are working on the next batch, which includes these goats by my good friend, Lainey Frick. I mean, seriously, look at the faces on these goats and look at these little jumpers. Oh my God, they're so cute. I am not gonna stencil with these today because I already did that during our my November month of live streams. But I did want to review them so you could see all the different goat options. They are absolutely too sweet for words and so realistic. The level of realism in Laney's work is, it's extraordinary and it makes so much sense because Laney grew up and continues to live on a farm. So she's around these animals all the time and she knows what they look like. She can draw them in her sleep. So I am very grateful that we have her on board as a stencil designer. You want goats? We got goats, baby. Yes, love them. All right, I'm gonna move this black piece of paper and I have a gel plate here and um, I thought it might be fun to play. We've got new stencils from a designer, new to Stencil Girl. His name is David Daniels. He's a watercolor genius, people, genius. He goes by the name Mr. Watercolor. Don't you love that? And look at some of these designs, O M. Gee, I just have this feeling that they are gonna 
completely rock, whether used individually or on top of each other. I'm going to play. Yes, let's just come along for some play here and see what happens. I'm going to first put down this um, fluorescent green because I think it might be pretty to have some pops of it after I layer up the other designs. So I have a little bit of an idea, but not a ton. And I'm not gonna use the whole gel plate, mainly because I don't have, um, I have smaller sheets of paper here ready. So I wanna just use a, just a portion of it, which kind of is frequently what I do. I just use a portion. I'm gonna start and put down these ones that, see, look at these ones that have the linear part. I adore, adore, adore that. You know how I love having little linear components in things. So we've got this. I'm gonna first put this here. This is the finger painting paper I'm using again. And I've switched over to some paper artsy paints. Now look at that just right there, it's pretty special, huh? And I'm going to grab a little bit of it down here. Yes, because, you know, these are botanicals, and they certainly are beautiful used as botanicals. But Mary Beth is an abstract painter, and for me, these are fabulous abstract designs that have movement and fluidity that I would never normally be able to achieve in my work. So... I'm gonna use them for other purposes. All right, now I got two going here. This is a shiny paper, so I apologize if you're getting a little glare. I'm gonna keep working on these two pieces and layer up some, um, some more backgrounds on these with a couple different colors. I'm on working in analogous schemes. That means colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So, um, blues and greens, some of my favorites. If you've ever been to, here to my house, my office is blue and green. <laughs> I, it's like probably goes back to my love of the beach and the out of doors, which is where we're going on vacation. We're going to the beach and I cannot wait. So I love blue and green and He's got a few more that have these edges, so I'm gonna do this a little bit again. Edges, and I thought there, oh yeah, here's one more that has edges. These are really cool, really, really cool. I wanna meet him, I've never met this guy, and I've looked at his website, and his work is just stunning. Oh my gosh, look at that, wow. Oh, wow. Nice. I mean, it's like almost instantly making these um, cool uh, botanical looking parts that are going to be great for collage. Absolutely magnificent. I can tell. Oh, my. Yeah. Hello. 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 Uh, go into this one. This color is more of the blue. The nice thing about using analogous is that you don't have to worry about blending what's going to happen when you blend out because you know that it's always going to look pretty good because the colors are right next to each other on the wheel. Now, let's say you want to add some opacity. You can just go over a section of your paper and darken it up like that. I'm going to do this one over here at the side. You know, it's it's your game here. Anything you want to do is definitely fair game. And let's get the rest of his stencils down here. Look at this one. I don't know what this one's supposed to be, but it almost rem it's kind of butterfly-ish, right? I love it. Almost reminds me of like butterfly wings. Oh, we're getting a nice depth here for sure on these papers. And here's the other thing I like about these stencils is the quality of how the white is left underneath. So you build up and you just automatically get um, 
a lot of value changes in your work, which is pretty cool. I'm going to, for this last pull, I'm gonna see if this tissue from the dollar store will pull. Lots of times tissues are too, um, too tender to pull from a jelly plate, but it looks like this one's gonna work. Nice, nice, nice. So I'll just get a few little tissue pulls. Very nice, fun, fun. All right, um, the other thing that we can do is, um, look at this one, I'm gonna address this guy again, and I wanna do it with this um, fluorescent. I'm gonna put it on here. I put my stencil down first this time, did you notice that? And I'm gonna put it on top. I'm gonna brayer over top. Some of that other paint is still down there underneath. That's fine. I'm gonna just brayer over top and get down in there around all those parts. Okay, then I'm gonna pull this up. No, I think it's gonna be pretty pale. I don't know if you'll see it or not, but let's see. Let's give it a try on this tissue. Oh yeah, very pretty, very nice. Just a few little botanical snips here for us to play with. Now, this will just sit right here, and I can come back at any time and just go direct to the paper with the paint. You know, it's so funny. We get so used to using these supplies like the gel play that it's like, oh yeah, remember back in the day when we used to just paint right on paper, right? We didn't even use the gel plate. Well, guess what? You can still do that. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like it's so, um, you get so locked in to this different procedure, you know, that, oh, it's like everybody's using the gel plate. Well, guess what? We still got just direct to paper too. So there you go. You can get a nice look just going direct to paper and adding a little bit more depth to this. All right, well, David Daniels, well done, my friend. These are awesome. I put the papers back down here and I just had this idea that I wanted to add a little bit of a darker element to the piece, the piece, the paper, you know what I'm saying here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of darkness to some of these. Now, here's the thing, when you're deepening up the effect like this, and I'm using a violet and a blue, I'm still staying with the analogous theme. And I've got two pieces of paper, they're just sitting here on the gel plate um, while I manage them. But I'm working across both, which is actually kind of a nice way to work too. And um, I'm just randomly using some of David's stencils because I really like how they all blend together. I'm sure from a botanical situation, they're supposed to represent, you know, different plants and this and that, but I just love how they represent beauty. I mean, they're, they're extraordinary and they're gorgeous. And oh my gosh, do you get some looks. So let's say you've done this. Now you can leave it just like this, or you can go back in again with one of the lighter tones and it, pop it one more time and throw the dark to the back just a little bit more. Now see how the dark is blending up with that green on the sponge? Okay, so see that adds again one more sense of dimension to the paper. Cecilia Swatton did this tree. It's like the underneath of trees, like looking up like a canopy of trees. I love this stencil. I've been dying to try it. In fact, I wanna contact Cecilia and see if we can get this in a six by six. I think I might use a smaller version of it too. Um, I love the way it radiates out from a center point. And it really does give you that. You're underneath a tree effect and you're looking at that canopy 
Also works very well with the David Daniel stencils. Beautiful work, Cecilia. Love this. How many times have I said love? You guys ever wonder what I would say if I didn't like a stencil? Well, guess what? If I didn't like a stencil, it wouldn't be part of Stencil Girl because I love all of our stencils. Last, but certainly not least, is Chris Cozen, and I'm thrilled to bring her aboard with Stencil Girl. She has designed some stencils that I love. I have to say, this guy might just be my little fave. I'm gonna show him on the black paper. It's so architectural, and um, I love the look of this one. Really love it. Any which way you turn it, I can see using it in my work quite a bit. It's, it's a very cool stencil. I love the edges of those buildings. Oh, I cannot wait to use this in my journal. This is going on vacation with me. And then look at this one. This is also quite architectural, but in a different sort of way. I could use this in so many different manifestations. I, you know, there are little component parts of it that are quite interesting. There's linear parts, there's circular parts. This has a lot of fantastic beauty going on. And it's a very, very cool stencil. Love it. And then the third one is this guy. Again, I like it very much. I'm going to start playing with this one, and I'm not going to use the gel plate, but I'm just going to, um, in fact, I'll just move it away, and I'm going to bring back some of this finger paint paper and just lay two sheets down here side by side, and I'm going to put this down. And I'm going to go back and use this again. Let's start with a blue. I want this coming through the background. What I always think about when I am painting papers is the first color that I use is what will pop out of the background. Like there won't be as much of that color visible. So that's, that's kind of what I'm always thinking about when I start. I love these big sections, these big swaths of color down here at the bottom. Nice, nice, nice. And I think I'm gonna like being a little messy with this one too, with my um, my color shaper. I always forget what this thing's called. Okay, I'll just put down a little bit of that blue. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't know if it's wet enough still, but it's worth a try. Oh, mm-hmm, yep. Very nice. Now, since I've got it this way, I'm gonna move the stencil. Remember these parts were down here, now they're up there. And I'm gonna go in, still working with my blues and greens, a little bit of, differences but not a lot just bring some other colors in when I use these painted papers in my work I like for them to look painterly I like when people look at my work with these collage components and they can't you know they can't tell necessarily that it's been collaged does that make sense? Like it looks like it could have been painted right on or it could have been a collage part or whatever. Now here I'm using the border of the stencil itself as a stencil. Go around and, and let's see where we are now. Yeah, these are getting quite interesting. This is a nice green. It's very transparent, which is quite nice. And I think 
I want to bring this bigger part over here. This is a stencil that I think I'm going to call one of the great integrators because I can just tell if you look at these pages that we're making individually, you can see how it would tend to integrate whatever you were doing. If you had a bunch of disparate parts that like kind of didn't really come together the way you wanted them to, you could use this stencil and it would bring them all together in an instant. Let's take a look at um, these other stencils of Chris's. Where did that little guy go? Uh-oh, I must have already put it in my travel bag, right? <laughs> that one I said I was gonna bring to, bring to vacation with me. Yeah, here it is, I'm pulling it back now. Okay. Oh yes, that's quite nice. These are winners, Chris. Well done, my friend. Really, really winners. Great stencils. You're gonna get such a great sense of movement when you use these and you can easily, it's almost like you can't possibly mess up with these stencils. They're really pretty special. Hmm, nice, nice, nice. Very nice. Again, in the smaller one, it has the larger and the smaller components. And for me, this is what um, makes a lovely abstracted stencil. I certainly love our pattern stencils, so don't get me wrong. I'm a pattern girl too. But if I'm in the mood to be abstract, a stencil like this makes all the difference in the world. So if you want to be abstract, Lenny, so if you want to be abstract, linear, like these two are gonna be great. If you wanna be abstract, more circular and movement-like, this one's gonna be a winner. I hope I have shared some tricks and tips with you regarding stencils and making papers to use in your artwork. I love these two batches of stencils that we introduced in November and December, and I appreciate you coming along for the journey. Thank you so much for watching. Do you want to make more art with stencils? Just check out Stencil Girls Techniques Playlist for more tutorials. And never miss a new video when you subscribe to our YouTube channel.